Okay, so this is part two, um, and this will not be a two and a half hour mammoth session um, like yesterday. Um, I just want to go into the more tiny details of things. I remember someone asking about click funnels and some landing pages. I forgot to cover that, so we'll, we'll do all that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So basically, the three things, uh, there's a lot of content here, I know there's only three bullet points, um, but yeah, we're going to talk quickly about how to avoid a futile endeavour. Um, we'll then look at an explanation of the ideal CAG or client attraction journey, and then actual bits and bobs you need, you know, like land what landing pages, what things you need, and the order of battle, okay? So that's what ORBAT is. Um, <clears throat> What I see happening a lot of the time is people doing the wrong things at the wrong time. For example, like people setting up a business or an idea and the first thing they do is set up a limited company. That is like the worst thing you could do. Um, really, you, you, you want to delay the, the, the time that you actually set up that LTD uh, because then you have 18 months before you have to file um, and pay any 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 taxes etc so yeah you want to delay that, delay that but anyway okay so let's talk about avoiding a futile endeavor so this is um, hopefully you will uh, most people setting up a new business for the first time they uh, in fact going back to what we looked at yesterday we covered a lot yesterday if you can see all these little doodles um, but the thing I want to quickly remind you on is this picture here um, People, in fact, even after yesterday, I still had people approaching me with, you know, I've got this amazing idea, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, but ideas are worth nothing. And I, I cannot stress how important um, the marketing budget of your idea is and also how to execute it. Um, so please always have that chiseled in the back of your mind that ideas are worthless. And a lot of people do engage in a new business or a hobby or, or whatever it may be, and they, they think that it's going to be a success because they want the product, but you are not your ideal uh, customer, or not most of the time you, you aren't. So a, a good way to test this is by doing a survey. Um, I did this, um, I set up my first proper business doing it this way. So what I did was I created a, a Google form I believe it's Google or a type form or something. Um, there's all sorts of um, forms you can do, type form. And in that form, I created a whole bunch of questions. Um, the, the questions were filters in themselves, so um, it would filter away people that weren't right for your target market, etc. And you, you'll need to somehow incentivize people to fill out this, this survey, okay? Because this is what it is, it's, it's, it's a survey and you're going to ask questions which will help form what you what you do. Um, what you then do is you simply, whoops, I forgot the F. You're then going to drive Facebook ads um, to this survey, and you're going to try and get a hundred people at least. Okay, even if it costs you a couple hundred quid. Um, to do that, it's definitely worth your your while. And then what you're going to do is, for all of the the people that, I mean, in that form, you're going to have a, a bunch of people that you know no joy, which is you know that they're never going to be interested. And you're going to have a whole bunch of people that are interested. And those people, you can see the answers what they put. And then you'll know how to craft your product, service, course, whatever it may be. Um, and then. You quickly create the product, or actually, no, you, you, you then drive these people who you think will like it to a um, you know a sales page of some sort and say, hey, thanks for your feedback, uh, I've taken everything on board, um, and I've created this course or this product or this service. Um, would you like to have you know super duper cheap discount, um, half price, or, or whatever it may be? Um, so for example, we, we did this with Float Norwich um, when we first launched in 2016, December 2016. So um, 
we in Norwich there's no there are no um, float pods in, in the whole of Norfolk and we weren't sure how many people would want to float so what we did we, we had a campaign um, and we got a whole bunch well actually with, with float it was a little bit different we actually um, drove a whole bunch of people uh, to or we drove people to a landing page And on that landing page, there was a whole bunch of science and videos um, and an opt-in form. And that opt-in form was, hey, put your details here, and if we launch in a few months, etc., um, you'll get a 50% discount here, and you know, opt-in to get a, a code of some sort. And what happened was that we, oh Jesus, come on. I've got a very laggy computer today for some reason. I'm not running any extra things. Spend all my time moving things around. Um, yeah, so what then happened is that we had roughly, I think it was about five and a half thousand uh, people, 90% of them being women, um, opting in. And so we straight away knew, um, you know, our target demo was, was women, etc. And then what happened is that we we launched and we drove those um, five and a half thousand people to the sales page, sales page um, to to get there. I think it was like a uh, a fifty, no, it was a twenty, yeah, twenty five pounds. It was roughly half, it was sixty percent off. We gave them so uh, sixty uh, discount, yeah, disco, uh, well, discount. And then what happened is that in the space of five days, we generated twenty-five thousand pounds worth of sales in literally. So that paid for a, a yeah. So that was a really good launch, and we did the same thing with our cryo thing. So I mean, all of this works for, for everything. So physical retail, or so I'm not sure if this is this page is still valid, but we drove a whole bunch of people to this. So yeah, whole body cryotherapy is coming to Norwich, blah, blah, blah. Register to get your interest in a massive discount. Um, so there's a little YouTube video of, you know, what, what whole body cryo does, etc. Um, loads of sports stars use it, yada, 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 more science. Um, register your interest. And actually, we also used a, a bit of cool bit of software where people that did opt in they got their own referral link, and uh, X amount of people got you know so many free referrals, uh, free free cryos. And so that's what it looks like. Um, and in that, unfortunately, um, one week after we launched the cryo, we then got locked down, as in the COVID lockdown. Um, yeah, which was just annoying uh, we use viral loops for some um, uh, viral loops I think yeah viral loops this is what the, the software we used and that way people could share their own unique link and then they had like a milestone etc so you know they, I think we got some like three referrals you got a free uh, session and stuff like that and, and beyond there's one guy that did 50 odd referrals and he's now got uh, three months worth of uh, cryo sessions, one a week, one a week for three months. Um, so yeah, he did really well on that. So yeah, you can do all that sort of stuff. So you can actually see if there's actually any interest before you even set up the business. Um, I personally knew there was going to be interest, so um, I, d I I was already halfway setting up the business before I did that. But you could do this bit first and and get those people there. Um, so yeah, and then the thing is, out of the hundred people. Um, like, yeah, I, I mean, if you filter the, with your, your targeting with the Facebook ads, you, you'll get better quality people, etc. Uh, and then, yeah, so I remember I had a course, um, oh God, this was like eight years ago, I set up my first trading course. Like, I had loads of people prodding me, hey, teach me how to trade, etc. as in my close friends and family. And then I was like, oh, I don't think people want to learn how to trade. Um, uh, you know, via a you know online webinar type thing. So I did this exact same thing, um, and I got a hundred people uh, do it. And then out of this, forty-eight people signed up that they would like a um, that they I think it was they, they paid like two hundred quid or two hundred and fifty quid or something for a six-week um, 
course. So every Wednesday night um, for six weeks, I would basically teach them everything I knew um, for super, super cheap. So what is that? Let's say it was 200 quid, so 200 times 48. Yeah, it was about 9,000, it was just under 10 grand. And the thing is, what this meant was that I didn't have to create the whole freaking course. What would I, all I'd have to do was make sure that every Wednesday, I just created the content for each Wednesday. And then I would do, you know, the Wednesday thing, and then get feedback, and look at all their questions, etc. and then that'll tailor the next week, etc. So this way I'm not wasting time building up a whole course, etc. Um, so, yeah, so that's one way you can do it. And also, if you're buying a widget, like a lot of people are like trying to sell a widget, you know, it could be a big picture frame or a electronic type thing. Um, another thing you could do is a little test campaign. So I would go out and buy um, uh, yeah, you buy one uh, depending on how big, uh, how um, how expensive your thing is. Are uh, you could buy like one to ten um, products or widgets, etc. Then you can create your um, landing page or your sales page. Sales page. Um, that will then go through to the order form or order um, order page, etc. And then all you're going to do is you're going to drive traffic down to this. Some people go to there and then boom. Okay. So what you then do is you could drive traffic to your sales page. So you, first of all, you can see how many clicks you get and then you know your click through rate. So then, yeah, your click through rate, that's going to be important. Um, because whatever percent that is, is, is important here. Then obviously a whole bunch of people are going to bounce off your sales page and not do anything. Uh, but what you'll then find is that you're s probably uh, you may get something like 15% will go through to your order page, um, and then a lot of people bounce through there. And then you you'll then basically have to look at you know whatever your com you know your conversion rates are, and literally try and sell them. Um, try and sell one or try and sell ten and then you can work out your cost per acquisition, okay? So then you can see whether it's, it's worth doing or not. Or if you don't even wanna buy your thing because you, you, you're really not sure if, um, if you're not sure people will actually do it, don't. Just have, um, you could, on the order page, if someone puts in their details to actually um, go ahead with it, you can, you can then go send them to a whoops page. Whoops whoops sorry and say you know it's like out of stock um, and that way you can see how many people will actually go here um, and then you yeah so really all you, you, you need all you would need to do is create sales page an order page and a whoops page and then just drive traffic to the sales page and then and then see what filters down um, so yeah the, just always and by the way, when you're doing your research to see if your business is a goer, don't rely on your friends and family. They will just tell you what you want to hear. Um, so, but yeah, always start small. Um, and I'm always a big fan of discounting heavily for your first um, cohort of clients. Um, just so you can get testimonials and get feedback and whether your product service widget is actually any good. Um, so it depends on the thing. I yeah obviously I'd be tracking everything um, I I wouldn't do Google Ads um, or it depends on the project uh, product because something you only use remember Google I think this is a good distinction to make clear so oh yeah Google Analytics so I thought you meant Google AdWords sorry analytics yeah you look at everything for analytics I prefer Hotjar um, so yeah, just a quick one so Google is good for thing uh, for people searching Facebook is good for um, basically just targeting so if, if you have something or a service where people actually actually search for it then yeah Google AdWords is good um, but if you've got a business where no one's searching for it um, <laughs> the like Adam like you're gonna be the 
Diabetes Destroyer or whatever better word you got for that. No one's going to be typing in Diabetes Destroyer. They'll be, t mind you, they'll be t typing in stuff similar to that. You know, how do I get rid of diabetes or whatever. Whereas Facebook, you can target your, your target demo. So in terms of um, Google Anal Analytics, I actually prefer, so this is a bit of a uh, off thing, I use Hotjar. Now I haven't actually logged into my Hotjar for a while, um, so this could be interesting. But Hotjar shows you everything. Um, log in, it shows you heat maps, it records the sessions. So I'm going to do this on another screen just in case I don't want to breach GDPR and all that bollocks. Um, oh, it's not bollocks, but you know what I mean. So I okay. So recordings. Here we go. Yeah. So I can look at recordings, etc. And uh, like here's here's one. So this person from Ghana, obviously uh, on the 22nd January, looked at my trading test drive page, and I can play their recording. So I can actually see exactly what they did. So looking at this, they're on their mobile phone, and you can see they're on this page for four minutes and 53 seconds. Let's speed this up to four times speed. You can see what they're clicking, what they're scrolling, they're spending a long time on that <laughs> that landing page. Um, so yeah, this person's reading it through, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna fast forward to see if they... Yeah, and then it just shows you the whole journey. Um, so it's not just that, how do I exit this? How do I, I have no idea, oh, yeah. there we go. And yeah, so like this person, again, oh, from Portugal, this person spent 25 minutes on my page. Ah, oh, so this is a risk calculator. So this is a trader using the risk calculator. But you can see how many pages people click through. Like this person landed on. Yeah, you just install the pixel on your website. But look, it's showing you the movement of their mouse, what they're clicking. They're looking for everything about me. Obviously, there was a video there. I've put this at four times speed, but yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. And then it'll show you all the different things they're clicking. But here's the thing: the, the reason I like Hotjar is because if you're doing your, uh, you know, this, you know, this little um, process here, you can see where people are bouncing off, or if they're clicking on a link that you don't want them to click on, or blah blah blah. Um, so it, it is invaluable. Um, and then yeah, you've got full optics. You can do everything from you know. Uh, all sorts of different things and what's even better is for those that have a, a sales team etc what you can do is like if you're sending someone to a video page for example um, I'm just going to move my little face up here just in case um, so if, if you're sending people to a, um, let's move it down here so if you're again driving traffic to a video page and you know there's a video etc and you want them to watch it um, there's two things you could do um, obviously you could if you use Wistia, Wistia is good for video tracking once someone gets to a certain percentage of the video watched Wistia will then give you know a little bing bong little notification to your team or your office um, and then someone can actually pick up the phone if that's a phone and then call them and go hey um, Sorry for being spooky, but we just had an alert that you've watched the video or whatever. Do you have any questions? Blah, blah, blah. Or you can, yeah, uh, yeah, or you can, yeah, just use a hot jar and go, and then you can see once they've watched all the video, you get it to alert you, and then you simply pick up the phone and then speak to them and say, hey, can I answer any questions? That sort of stuff. So, yeah. Okay, that's, we've gone off on, off track there, but that's just a little example there. Um, so, oh yeah, James, yeah, it's just a separate um, pixel. Like, you can put all sorts of pixels on your, on your website. So, that's that. Um, didn't want to spend too much time on that. So, quick explanation of the ideal client attraction journey. So, let's move over here. Um, so, this is it. I know it looks scary, but don't let it scare you. <laughs> so, I'm going to zoom in over here. So, first of all, you're driving traffic 
to a hook or a filter. So this could be, you know, an opt-in page, free something, cheap, whatever. Um, yeah, it could be like a PDF or yeah, whatever is relevant to you. Um, you then drive them to your product for prospect. So it's content sales page, etc. Now, obviously, if they, oh, I don't want to move this. Um, if they go straight through, obviously they're, they're going to buy, then they're going to buy other stuff, etc. And they'll become a star client. But very few, a, a tiny, tiny, teeny weeny percentage of people will go straight through this. Um, but if they do, eventually at some point you need to run a testimonial or referral campaign. Try and automate your testimonials uh, at harvesting. So, you know, you could put in your CRM that after a month of being a client or you, like when you're mapping out your client journey with you, um, you can map out where you think peak happiness would be and then send them an email saying, hey, um, hope you've enjoyed being with us so far. Um, can you please leave a you know, testimonial on Google, Facebook? Good, uh, an honest one if it's bad or good. Um, so that's that. However, that's like my, you know 1% or less will go straight through this. Um, however, not, this, this bit's important. Oh my lord! I'm clicking all sorts of things over here. Um, Ninety, you ha you really have to budget that. Ninety nine percent of people are going to be no buyers, as in straight away. Um, so you then need to put you. You'll end up if you do this properly. By the way, this takes a lot of work. You, like I'm not going to um, bullshit you here. This is a lot of work. It will take you. You know, if you if you're beasting yourself, it could take you a week to set everything up. Um, but a week isn't that bad. I'm a big believer that do the hard work early to make the e selling easier. Um, so you, it's all done on autopilot. So yeah, basically you then have a cold retargeting campaign and that could be doing anything from sending them a whole bunch of videos um, over time, etc. And if they're still not engaged, just, you know, hey, have a chat. No, and, and then if they still don't do anything and they're still not gonna buy, it's not you, it's me. Um, basically saying, hey, obviously we're not for you. Um, my, this is my last email. I'll never speak to you again. Blah blah blah. And believe it or not, some people go from here straight up to here, um, or here they get on a phone chat and they go, yeah. But long story short, you you want to get them on the phone um, if you can. Um, that's why I've always got a fancier chat, fancier chat. Whether it's you or someone in your office um, d doing it, um, people are like convenience. I know people have chat bots and stuff like that but really nothing nothing beats a human then warm retargeting campaign then hot etc and then yeah so long story short all of this the, the whole goal of this bit here is simply just to drive them back to your sales page eventually once you know that they, they've got all of their questions answered etc um, then obviously in parallel in the in the background you got you need a um, a client on onboarding and fulfillment campaign to make sure that you know they're getting everything they need to like for example I've got the realistic trader there's a lot of different there's a lot of working parts we've got our trading bot we've got our trading logging software we've got the Facebook group the telegram thing the the court the video court like there's all sorts of moving parts so you need to make sure that no one misses out um, what you don't want is people not yeah I've had this before where I failed in this onboarding process and people didn't re even realize there's a a telegram group <laughs> uh, and that's pretty pivotal um, so and in terms of your client on onboarding just quick side uh, tangent what you need to do is basically get a big what I tend to do is get two A4 papers pieces of paper sellotape them together so and then put them landscape and then just draw a line right like this start end and then just think, right, someone's obviously joining you here. What is, and then map out the perfect experience. You know, one month, month two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, send love bombs. Um, like, for example, if you know they have a birthday, send them a package. Um, or every three months, send them a little gift, an unexpected gift, etc. Uh, just do, like, think of a business where, which you are completely in love with. And then just have a little look at why you're in love with them. Um, like for example, I've got um, a couple of Teslas, so I've got. So I'm in love with Tesla. I love Tesla um, so much. So I've got a Model X, Model S. I want to get the uh, the Roadster. I want a solar roof. I want solar battery packs. I want everything. Um, 
and the reason I love it, I mean, it's just a really simple thing. Tesla has a, um, a software um, roadmap, which is awesome. So basically, it goes down and on and on and on. And every, f or whether it's down or sideways, it doesn't really matter. But every month, my cars get updates. So, for example, the last update we had is at Fallout Shelter. Is it Fallout, Sh Fallout Boy? Or is it? I can't remember. Fallout, I'm curious. Uh, Fallout Boy? The game? No, Fallout Shelter. Yeah, this one. So this game, I can now play in my car. Um, which, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not going to play it, but every month we get a new upgrade, you know, uh, or a bunch of new upgrades. So Tesla's constantly over-delivering. De over um, so stuff like that. Um, yeah, so this is the... Yeah, so what you'll end up having is loads and loads of different... Um, different campaigns and it would look like an absolute mess on your um, ad, man ad manager but um, yeah don't f you're just constantly retargeting etc and once you've got all of this set up then like your marketing marketing machine will be on autopilot um, and a, just a quick one I just want to clarify this over here hot leads warm leads cold leads etc so uh, and also the, the the cold and warm and hot campaign so a good way that you can sort of um, map this out is that if for example uh, yeah here we go it's cold warm oh, wham warm and then hot now the way that I personally distinguish the difference between a cot cold and a hot lead etc are by the questions that they ask okay so if you have a, a business like uh, let's take trading okay for example um, a cold question would be what is trading that would be a really cold question like they have no idea what trading is you know um, can I yeah, there's all sorts of other questions like that, okay? Um, and other people, you know, is it risky, etc., etc. So they would be cold questions. Warm questions would be, um, can I do this on top of my job, etc. You know, on top of my job. So they're warmer because by asking that questions already, they've already, by default, you can um, see that they've already answered, you know, the cold questions, and now they're thinking, oh, is this suitable for me? You know, um, can I, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then hot questions is, you know, when can I sign up, or when can I do this, or how much is it to do this, or um, how can I withdraw the money, blah blah blah. So what you can do, what I would highly recommend doing is coming up with about 20 questions, so 20 FAQs, and everyone will know the, the typical FAQs in your business. Uh, write them all down, and then separate them into cold, warm, or hot, etc. And then simply make a video. Just come up, make 20 videos covering each question. Um, in fact, I did this years ago. I'm not sure if I even got them on my YouTube. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So it's I am kid FAQ. Yeah, here we go. This is uh, 2015. I made this. How long does the course take? And then I simply answer the course. You know, I just did this in my kitchen, etc. And then so you can use these videos to for your your campaigns, etc. So that's one thing. Now. It's all very well and good. Let's say your your things are going well, um, and now money's starting to come in. Okay, so money is coming in. This is this now comes into your sort of money management uh, side, and this is like I have a thing about the golden goose, uh, or a magic goose that shits out golden eggs. Um, and what a lot of people do is that they slaughter the goose and have a roast goose on a, on a Sunday. Whereas your goose, i.e. your cash cow, um, needs to be, you know, fed, watered, and looked after. And what you need to do is live on the golden eggs that your goose pops out. So what I tend to do, 
obviously you can be really intricate here. So I call them first generation, second generation, third generation eggs, etc. So the money's coming in. Your your business. So basically, your business is this, okay? Because it's a ca nice cash flowing asset. So you you do all this. Money comes in from sales, revenue, blah blah blah, blah and I call that the first generation golden egg. So what I then do is take all of that money and pump it straight back in over here at the traffic to try and increase and fatten up my lovely bird over here. And then if that goes well, you've then effectively got second generation golden eggs. And this I would basically, this is what you could probably call a divvy. So you're actually taking money out of the business, etc. Um, and what you do with your divvy obviously is completely uh, personal, it's up to you. But what you could do, yeah, so salary and divvies, now you are the magic golden goose farmer. Uh, or if you have a job as well, everything comes to you. So that, that is when I would split them up into different pots. So you have your operating account. Oh, Jesus, lordy, 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 there's a typo here. How the hell did that get through? Anyway, we'll, yeah, we'll have to change that. Um, huh, so that's the systems error. That, that went through three people. Three people missed that typo. Whose fault is it? It's not my staff, it's my fault. You're the, the director, everything is your fault in your business. Everything, okay? So, yeah, so all this means is that the systems I have, you know, three freaking people not seeing it, is that now I have to, all this is telling me is that I need to be more specific in my systems. Like, I, I will probably now have to say, right, when you're spell checking, do this sort of order flow, okay? Don't just skim, always go left, you know, you know, come up with something like that. Um, anyway, so operating counts, that's where all your bills and expenses go out of. So most of that will go into that. At least 5% in your uh, PDA account, your personal development account, so that you can, do, you can basically enhance your, your knowledge, yourself, etc. Courses, seminars, books, Audible, that sort of stuff. At least 5% in your wealth account. Um, I'll talk about that in a sec. And then 5% in your reward account. So you have to spend this and deplete it every single month. Remember, um, life is life really sucks if you've got nothing to look forward to every month or every quarter, etc. So make sure you spend and waste everything um, in this in this account. Now your wealth account is basically you're going to put 90% of that at least into your cash flowing assets and 10% into capital appreciating assets, stuff that, you know, buy low, sell high, that you hope, so crypto, yeah. So for me personally, it's really, it's just crypto um, in, in this bucket over here, and cash flowing assets, I just go and buy other businesses. Um, or, if this marketing machine is working so well, I simply just loan money from myself back to the business. Um, yeah. So that is the whole client attraction journey. Any questions so far before we move on? I've covered a fair bit already. I daren't unmute you all because we've had some funny people in here so far. <laughs> if you can put in the chat box any questions so far. Three, two, one. Okay, moving on. Um, Aaron, I just saw your question. Oh, right, is it the same as Vimeo? So yeah, Wistia. So Wistia, um, I prefer Wistia. Oh, I use, by the way, all my, I use Vimeo because we have thousands of videos and it's way cheaper. Um, but Wistia has better optics and better tracking, etc. However, because I've got like um, lots and lots of videos, Wistia, I was ending, ending up spending like three grand a month <laughs> on Wistia hosting. Um, so Vimeo is way... Um, yeah, it was ridiculous, so I just moved to Vimeo. Um, uh, Janie, oops, sorry, I'll just try, I'll scroll up to see your question. Um, gotcha, so you need a separate Google um, F Facebook pixel. Yeah, you can put as many pixels in your website as you want. Um, I think that was a question you asked. I'll just zoom. Up. Ah, here, here we go. So I'm launching a children's poetry book in October. Would like to do pre orders. Will this work? Yes, it would. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it would. All you would do, um, it's going to be tough though. Uh, you would basically drive traffic to uh, pre order book, pre order, and remember you're going to give a discount. You know, and these days, 
no one gives a shit about a 10% discount anymore. It has to be like a 50% or more um, discount, something like that. Just basically, you need to incentivize them to actually pre-register, and then you then you'll have a little list of people, um, as in your um, yeah your list. It will generate a list, obviously, and then you um, you drive those people to a sales page to actually buy your book. Um, so, but before you even you know even think of doing that, I would literally just do this bit here. Just see how many people actually sign up. Because um, it's a hard one. Um, like, if you're doing yeah children's poetry book, it's it's hard. You need to really put in the benefits, um, you know, so people actually do that. Like, with se non sexy products, it's um, you it, it's, it's it's quite hard. Um, you have to be really you have to put a lot of time in thinking about what your you know, your copy etc. Right, um, let's look at the question box. This model basically works in any industry. Yeah, it does. Any industry. Um, positive mindset for kids. Yeah, cool. Just So really, you're targeting the parents. So in this, with, with the traffic in Facebook, you can actually target parents um, with kids. Obviously, parents have kids. <laughs> um, between a certain age range. So I don't know what your age range. So you can target parents with kids between the age of five to... 15 etc and then yeah in the UK or world etc so that will really help um, so for my fairy pen pal we target parents as well um, so birdie so it's business but just knowing what tools to use and stick to the model yeah um, and by the way I've looked at uh, in fact I've been very Facebook Google online heavy here um, I'm just gonna have a quick detour and show you a, a model which um, a non-online model, if that makes sense. So there's a business that I bought. I've only got 35% of the business, um, but basically, when I found them, their uh, their their funnel or their client attraction journey was was a uh, cold call. Straight away, I was like shivering. I was like, "Oh dear lord, I hate cold calls. I, I hate receiving them. I hate. I just don't. Yeah, don't cold call. I just it's, it sucks. It's a waste of everyone's time." Um, cold call meeting uh, sale. Yeah, it's pretty much this. Um, there's a few little bits and bobs like tendering, getting on the PSL preferred suppliers list, etc. But here's the crazy thing: in essence, once they got a meeting, so in, in this business, um, once they got a meeting, they had a really high close rate. So 50% of the time, they got a sale, um, and the sale was roughly an average sales a 25 grand contract but this is the crazy bit they're spraying and praying they're literally throwing as much mud in the wall as possible half a percent <laughs> so what this means is that if if you wanted to have one meeting um, they would have to do 200 cold calls to get one meeting so in order to have one sale you'd need two meetings at least and four hundred calls and it was just nuts and we had six people they had six people um, you know all hitting the phones in fact I'm not gonna bother drawing people um, and so all I did is I completely changed it because I was like this sucks I don't want to have a business that does cold calling everyone hates cold calling so what we did is that we came up with a big list sorry for those that have heard this before um, so I came up with the dream 100. So the goal was that if we close one person in this list, it would double our revenue or do um, you know a massive uptick in our revenue. Uh, the dream 250. So again, big companies that would you know do really well, and then our bread and butter. Okay, so we got just under a thousand people. We did a lot of research. So it's basically research to find the the postal address uh, and the name of the uh, HR director. That is a decision maker for this business. The one we're selling into. Um, and then what we did is we send a trust parcel and in this trust parcel we included brochures a Kit Kat um, a, uh, a fancy tea bag you know have a have a break have a Kit Kat watch this video um, and yeah and in that thing we we're driving to a, a web page we're basically we we're sending them to a video page 
and in that video page it was like hey thanks I hope you hope you enjoyed your Kit Kat blah 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 um, blah and the goal of that was to set up a call then to set up a meeting because also don't forget um, the 50% of the t some of these meetings were just complete waste of time so I wanted to filter the meetings as well uh, as in I wanted a better quality so when we went to a meeting it was you know game on uh, and then sale so it was a longer um, longer funnel however here's the thing what we then did was that we um, we had warm callers so instead of cold calling um, we basically repurposed our call handlers, handlers into chocolate chasers choc chasers because we're sending these massive, big, bright blue, um, shiny um, uh, parcels through the post, you know, recorded delivery, etc. Um, or no, special delivery, seven pound fifty. And so we knew exactly that they would get the, you know, the the, the person, Julie, or whoever the HR director or whatever is, would get it um, before ten o'clock. So what we then do is we get the team to chase the chocolate, and then we'll go, hey. Um, so I guess this, you know, this call going sort of halfway. Go, hey, uh, just um, chasing up to see if you got a um, the, the the big blue pack, blah blah blah, um, and if you enjoy the chocolate. And guess what? Nearly everyone didn't get the chocolate um, because the HR directors always had PAs um, or some sort of gatekeeper. And what what we found is that the gatekeepers were nicking the chocolate and then passing on the pack if they did ever get the pack and so we we're like oh this is unacceptable and then we used to, then the next day we'd send them you know five Kit Kats um, to say right we're rectifying the situation yada 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 anyway this warm calling this chocolate chasing all we're doing is just to confirming did you get the chocolate and it's like hey this is the company um, this is us big bright blue envelope did we get you know did you have a did you get, yeah did you get the pack did you get the chocolate blah 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 and the fact that we're basically this is getting us front of mind and so they would then go and look for the packs if they didn't get it um, and so they get the call and then guess what we they, they may put in another call and go hey we'll, we'll call you again tomorrow um, you know just to book in a call or actually have the call but long story short um, if they got the pack the video page is to simply set up the call okay um, then we get the call so here's the thing, right? But <clears throat> so the research is just to get good leads, okay? Uh, so we know how or who to send the packs to. The pack is not to sell. This is where everyone goes wrong. They're like, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. No, the pack is just to get the call, okay? You have to always go. To, people always like what they tend to do in marketing is they're meeting someone in a club and going, hey, let's have sex and let's have lots of babies and get married tomorrow morning. Um, go away you freak um, no one's gonna do that and so marketing is exactly the same you it's little baby steps you need to date etc so you have the call the object of the call is not to sell the object is a call is a, hey can we set up a physical meeting and the direct one of our directors and a sales and a, our trainer or salesperson will come and actually show you stuff blah 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 and then the meeting this is where we sell so long story short yes it was effectively the same funnel, but obviously I added a few little working parts. But all I did is I upped this 0.5% to 5%. And at the same time, we upped the average uh, client sale value from 25 grand to 75 grand. And we still maintained a 50% close rate, etc., etc. So that business, when I joined them, that business was doing about oh, 150 grand per year um, revenue. Probably two, nah, probably 200k revenue, um, and now this business is doing an average of 200,000 pounds per month revenue. Okay, I'm not going to say profit; it's a healthy profit, but yeah. So with this business, just by doing this one little thing, there's no real online Facebook, Google marketing here, not even LinkedIn. We're just using old-fashioned lumpy mail, trust parcels. And we've basically, yeah, and so this business is doing, oh, it, it really does fluctuate, but it's between 200 to 300 grand a month revenue. Post-COVID, 
it's dropped a bit so it's about yeah it's, it's about 200 now but it we i think we hit a peak of about 300 grand a month revenue at one point so um, bearing in mind like our costs our outgoings are 150 grand per month opex so we we focus on revenue basically we need to maintain at least 180 uh, grand because we've got VAT and all sorts of bits. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, we need at least 170, 180 grand a month just to break even. So, <clears throat> but yeah, everything above 180 grand is pure profit. So, so that is that. I've gone off on one here, um, and we're 51 minutes. Jesus, I thought I really do go off on one. Sorry, I meant to cover all of this so far, but within half an hour. Right now, we let's move on to the next bit. Oh, in fact, any, I'm just going to look at the chat box, see if I've missed any questions. Please pop the, any questions in before we move to the next section. So, Gerber, Gerbeer, sorry if I've messed up your name, Gerbeer. Hi, so I plan to sell affiliate uh, fitness digital product. Thinking of marketing through a new Facebook page, linking to an affiliate page. What do you think? Don't do it. Don't do it. Seriously. Um, I, again, I don't wish to wee over your dreams, etc. Um the sorry I've just got distracted James what someone someone what the, in future I'm not going to publish any links on Twitter I can't see anyone doing anything but yeah this is being recorded don't worry so let's move sorry I get, got distracted so go be uh, let's go back to here I wouldn't do it because you're you're gonna be spending a lot of money um, I don't know if you're here yesterday, but for example, I've got a business which has a seven pound 30 day trial and it's costing me over a hundred quid just to get a seven pound trial. Like, and yeah, unless they're giving you a really good CPA deal as in cost per acquisition deal, I, I, I really wouldn't do it. Um, I would, you know, do your own product. Um, it, it's just hard. And the thing is affiliate marketing, everyone's been conned with all sorts of become an affiliate marketer course, etc. An affiliate marketer is basically basically someone that drives traffic to someone to you know sell someone else's product for a commission effectively now in order to be a good affiliate marketer you need to be good at online marketing so obviously I don't know you you could be really good at Facebook Google Insta marketing etc but in, unless you're really good I wouldn't do affiliate marketing um, but, yeah unless unless the, the the thing is good so for example um, we uh, I have a so on the realistic trader.com we have this thing called the trading test drive right it's 99 pounds um, so it's cheap as chips uh, it has loads of value loads like it's like God and loads, it's loads and loads of videos it's ridiculous anyway so it's 99 pounds and we we haven't really ad published this or advertised it but um, we give away all of that as a commission so I think it's so no what so there's two things so what we used to do so 99 divided by the VAT let's get rid of the VAT yeah we used to give away 82 pounds 50 for anyone that sold a uh, trading test drive or is it 80 pounds 82 50 or 80 quid I can't remember so roughly 80 quid so we get so we, we, we made no money of that and we found it didn't work so what we're about to release now is that if anyone sells a 99 pound course we will give uh, I think it's 300 pounds so that's different so what you need to do if um, sorry I'm just gonna write around here uh, so with affiliate marketing you need to find something where they're gonna give you a massive upfront CPA commission okay cost per acquisition so for example if you go and sell a 99 pound trading test drive for us we will give you 300 quid was it 250 250 or 300 quid one of the one of the two and that way you can then, all of a sudden you've now got a good budget to try and see you know if you can then sell a 99 pound trading test drive for less than 300 quid you're in the money but what a, what a lot of people do is if you know hey sell this product for me it's 99 quid and I'll give you 10 quid you know or, or 20 quid you're gonna lose money there's no way in hell you're gonna sell that product for 20 quid or uh, less than 20 quid so yeah, you just got to be very careful. Um, so, questions. Let's go back. Let's scroll down. Uh, decent stats for for raw cold, cold calling. To be fair, yeah, true. 
Uh, yep, correct. Uh, this is better than any three-day seminar I've been on. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. Um, well, yeah, most seminars are 10% content, 90%. Everyone stand up and massage to the person to your right and give a high five to the person on your left. That sort of bollocks. Um, I hate padding. Adam did this in telecom. Sent for me. Pass them to. Yeah, exactly. It, it works. Um, Heidi, how did you find this business and what was your proposition for them to give you 35%? Oh, that's a long story. I basically, in a nutshell, said, hey, I want to come on board. I want 35% of your business. I'm going to grow your business. And if I, if, I, if, if I grow your business within a certain period of time to a, you know, and hit a certain profit level, I get 35% of your business for you know, a cheap, you know, less than market value. So, but again, this is moving into mergers and acquisitions. Today is not the time for that. I'll have to do another session about M and A. But yeah, but effectively, I've got thirty-five percent of the business for free. But yeah, and the business is now booming. Um, yeah, lots of trolls. Ignore the trolls. Uh, it is recorded. Uh, some, some. Okay, I, I. Yeah, just don't watch them, <laughs> um, unless you want to. <laughs> so highly recommend the ninety-nine pound gig. Save me waste. Ah, oh, cheers, Adam. Um, <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> kick out user one three seven. Yeah, I can one three seven. Okay, this person's gone by the looks of it. How do you become an affiliate? Um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> here's the thing. I don't deal with any of the operations of the business, but I will write a little note. And I will Facebook you. I'll contact you. Um, cool. Yeah, it has to be incredibly seductive for the affiliate to win. Blah, blah, blah. Funny comments when... It, yeah. Okay, cool. No questions. Let's move on. Let's not waste any more time. Actual bit... Okay, so now, actual bits and bobs you need in terms of Orbat. So, as I mentioned, when you do the, the WAP trial, um, shameless plug, 30-day trial, £7, seriously, if you can't afford seven pounds for 30 days of like insane content, like more content than what we're seeing in these two free sessions, um, you're never gonna make it in business. Like <laughs> seven quid for 30 days, what is that divided by 30? So seven, divide that by 30. If you can't be asked to spend 23p a day for 30 days, then yeah, um, we can't be friends. <laughs> but anyway, um, we get a whole bunch of things and one of the things is this uh, list. So what I did in order is I made a PDF and um, we also have an A3 poster. So instead of, you know, that you can stick on your wall. And what we're gonna do now is go through this list and you will be, um, you, yeah, you'll see what to do in order. And you'll see most people do things in the wrong order. So I won't labor it too much. So once you're pre-POC, so you've got an idea, but you're not sure if it will work or not, that's pre-POC, pre-proof of concept. So get a rough idea of the business, yeah, sure. Uh, choose if the business, uh, if it's for consumers, so B2C or B2B, yep. Get a rough idea of your offering, yep. In fact, what we do is, if I can get up my thingy-majiggy, uh, thingy-majiggy, here we go. And we have a couple of planners here, so I'll just open both. I'm not sure which one's which. Okay, yeah. So here's the new biz planner. You get this spreadsheet. So you can, uh, what I would highly recommend is filling in this whole freaking thing. Uh, what's your business vision, your business mission, yada, 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 features versus benefits, all that sort of stuff. Once you've filled this whole thing, for some reason the, it's gone all squiffy, um, you, you'll fill out your product architecture, then you'll know exactly what your business is, what you're gonna do, etc. So by filling that out, you will then be able to breeze through this tick, 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 etc. Um, come up with the name of your business, doesn't really matter. Um, come up with the name for your product or service. Yeah, name your product and service, that's important. Don't just go, we do this. It, you know, like I've got the trading test drive. It's not the best name, but it'll do. Um, really refine who your target market is. Yeah, all that. So page one is just, re you know, just you do that on your napkin planning, really. And then more in depth on, you know, in the spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to move my face over here. It's out of the way. So, uh, what else is there? <clears throat> Benefits, features, 
yeah, think of your product architecture. Yeah, that's fine. You need to then you need to go and get your own domain slash URL. So we use guru.co.uk. We have no affiliate links. We just use it. That's just who we use. Um, because what you don't want, the worst thing you can do here is go. I mean, the <laughs> um, the the funniest thing is I saw someone giving trying to teach give some sort of financial advice um, and the person was driving you them to a Wix website so straight away it was like and at the bottom it was like free website by Wix or something like that and their email address is blah 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 at AOL.com like congruence is everything you, like would you trust this person I mean yes this person could be an absolute legend and is just shit at you know business type stuff but yeah, you, you need to be congruent. So, in fact, let's keep that. Um, come on, yeah. Um, so, for example, um, yeah, just sticking with Adam, I, I said he was the, you know, the diabetes destroyer yesterday. Um, well, yeah, you, your, your, your URL needs to be, you know, Adam at, you know, defeatdiabetes.com or you know what, whatever it may be um, so yeah get your domain it'll cost you like 10 quid a year or something stupid like that get a CRM so a customer or client relationship manager uh, manager so there's a couple of things so here I've put 17 hats again I've got no affiliate deal or affiliate link I make no money by referring this but 17 hats is good if you're just starting out in business because it's gonna save you loads of money it's gonna be really good um, in fact, I'm just, just going to move my face full stop. So, features, guess what? It has 17 different things. Um, so, it's everything from a CRM, so you have your dashboard with your contacts, you can email them, projects, leads, questionnaires, quotes, contracts, like invoicing, your bookkeeping, calendar, like everything. You can take payments through it. it it's literally everything you need if you're a brand new person. So, I would do that again. I, I, I've got no links here but it's worth checking out. But when you upgrade your business um, and you, you can do things properly, what I'd highly recommend is Active Campaign. Now, there's all sorts of um, Active Campaign. Now, there's all sorts, there's Infusionsoft or Confusionsoft, Drip. Uh, avoid at all costs MailChimp um, and, and also basically avoid all the CRMs that a lot of marketers are using. <laughs> um, like Infusionsoft, don't do it. Just stay away from Infusion. I, I used Infusion for five years and email deliverability was just a joke. But here's the thing. Active Campaign have just gone out and raised a hundred million dollars. What other CRM out there has raised money recently? None. So the fact that they've got a hundred million dollar war chest means that they're, they're serious. They're going to be creating some insane features. So I, I use Drip, as you can see over here. I don't like Drip. We've just, it's one of those things, we've had it for a few years now and we're entrenched in it. All of our systems are reliant on Drip. I don't like it, but we will have, unfortunately, sorry, Lewis, if you're listening here, we will be migrating to Active Campaign. <laughs> it's gonna be like a two week job, that. Um, yeah, so use Active Campaign when, when you upgrade, but for now, um, 17 hats will do the trick and it's cheapest chips. Then get a PayPal and Stripe account, connect them to 17 hats so you can take payments, yada yada yada. Um, then if you have any software that is not talking to each other, use Zapier or Zapier. Um, so we, what we do is we hook up Zapier to a Google spreadsheet. So yesterday I showed you well, a zoomed out version of that um, My Fairy Pen Pal thing. But you can do I'm just going to move this aside, so here we go. So for example, uh, ba -ba 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 monthly audit, no, Chris, no, subscriptions, no, sales, is that the one? Sorry, I'm just trying to find, here we go. Let's zoom out so you can't see. So like for My Fairy Pen Pal, when we were running that campaign, um, we we use Zapier, or Zapier, I think it's Zapier. Um, so every single time a new lead came on board, um, 
the software, you know, all of their contact details will be automatically populated on this. So what you don't want to do is spend all of your life, you know, data inputting, you know, oh, I've got 10 signups today, great, and now I need to add in all of their details manually. That is just a waste of everyone, your time. So we got software to do it for us. So, and Zapier does everything. You can link, link pretty much every, every software to something else. Um, so that's one example of doing that. Um, yeah, and you connect it to CRMs, etc. Um, yeah. So the next one is open up a ClickFunnels um, account. Now, big caveat here: I am not a fan of ClickFunnels. I am not a fan of ClickFunnels, which I know sounds a bit weird because I've literally put them in this PDF to, for you to use them. The the reason I'm not a fan of any of the landing page builders is so. Is, is for performance. So here we have ClickFunnels. Um, what else is there? It's lead pages. That's another leading one. What else is there? There's um, fastpages.io. Let's just do three for now. Okay. So <clears throat> all of these landing page builders are great if you just want to whip up a quick, quick landing page um, that looks pretty. Um, oh, yeah, Kartra is even worse. I used to. Use, I've, by the way, I've used all of these. Now, here's the thing. Let's look at gtmetrics.com, and I'll open up another incognito so we can do two at a time. gtmetrics.com. Right. So I I do a lot of ad spend. So we're like we're doing about 20, 25 grand a month on Facebook ads at the moment, and I want to scale that up soon, very soon. And if you're doing any amount of volume with your ad um, adwords or your adverts, you need a, a hard, fast performing page, something that loads fast, something that Google likes, yada yada yada. So, the thing is with ClickFunnels, look at this. I use GT Metrics to do a little test. So let's do lead pages on the other one whilst we're doing that. Um, and what you'll find is that all of these pages. Are dreadful. They're shocking for CEO, uh, SEO, and they're shocking for speed and performance. And if you have a page that loads really slowly, you're going to basically waste loads and loads of money. Um, fast pages is a joke as well because they're called fast pages, yet they are dreadful on you know when you put them into Google um, or yeah GT Metrics. So I got this one doing its thing. So we'll just wait for a moment there. So I'll come back to this. Yeah. So I'm not a fan of ClickFunnels, but the reason I like the the reason I do recommend it is that when you're starting up a new business or a new when you're pre poc and you're trying to get something out there, you absolutely must not procrastinate. Procrastination equals um, I don't know lower momentum. Okay, you need to keep your momentum up. Um, and what a lot of people do is they'll dick about spending hours, days on uh, trying to find a good website or a landing page or whatever. You don't need to do that. I know ClickFunnels is quite expensive. It's £99 per month. But what it enables you to whip up any old page, anything, in literally minutes. Um, and these days, I mean, I still have a ClickFunnels account. So what I, I all of my web pages are WordPress. Um, so what I do is I use ClickFunnels as inspiration. So for example, I will, uh, the results are back, we'll look at that in a sec. So if I look at my ClickFunnels, again, I've got no affiliate deals here. I make no, nothing if you sign up with them. I'm, I know they have an affiliate deal, but let's say I want to set up a new page. So I'll quickly go to Funnels. Um, looks like I've been testing already. So if I want to, oh, it's a cookbook. No, ignore that. But let's say I just want to add a new page. Okay. Blah blah blah. I don't really care. Create funnel step. So I will look at this. Let's say I want to create a new sales page. Okay. I can then simply click on the sales page tab and have a look at all the different sales pages, etc. So I can like preview it. So let's look at this one. Oh, it looks like a video sales page. Yada yada yada. No, don't like that. Let's look at something else. Let's try that one. And what I'll do is I'll go, oh, okay, I like how this looks. Yeah, this looks alright. Cool. And then what I do is I I 
recreate this whole page in WordPress. <laughs> that is literally all I do. I just recreate it in WordPress. And that way it will be faster, much faster. Um, but again, even if you did want to use it, it's just simple drag and drop. But look at this. ClickFunnels, their own freaking homepage, has a dreadful F and an E for their the speed. Like it's So if they can't even sort out their own homepage, what do you think your own landing pages are going to be like? When, as in the pages you built through ClickFunnels. It's going to be a joke. Um, look at lead pages. Slightly better. Again, yeah. So I personally just use them for inspiration. And let's just, just for shits and giggles, let's do Kartra over here. And let's do fast pages over here. And we'll come back to that. Kartra is what I found was just incredibly slow. I've used all of these, by the way. Unbounce is another one we've used. But anyway, so basically, you just need to be able to whip up something and drive traffic to it quickly. You're still pre proc, by the way. Um, so you need to create a thank you page for when a client buys from you. Again, you can just go to ClickFunnels and create a thank you page. Um, the, and also, you put your pixel on the thank you page so you know so you, when someone's bought. Um, create a single sales page for your offering, listing, yep. Uh, ensure your sales page has a catchy headline, good subtitle, a video explaining. It's a, yeah, so with this, remember, just like when I mentioned that funnel, that you know, each step is not to sell, each step is to promote the next bit. Okay, so let's say your web page looks like this. Now, above the fold, so when I say above the fold, it's basically everything you see, um, like, so for example, if I go to the WAP, the page that loads is, is called above the fold, okay? And a huge, silly per per percentage of people never scroll down, so you need to make make it so that you, it's obvious that there's stuff below it. Um, and so, yeah, this is my site, and obviously it'll have several, you know, lots of diff different elements. Now, Remember, people buy with emotion and they justify with logic, okay? So you need to basically, up here, whatever you, it is, your um, it needs to be emotion up here, logic down here, and then, you know, testimonials, etc. Proof of, um, social proof, so to speak. But here's the thing, um, you will have a catchy headline. You, you need to come up with a headline, but guess what? The object of the headline is not for them to buy, it's to simply read the subtitle. Um, what will then happen is that if there's a video or a picture, people then look at the picture. What is the object of the picture? They'll then read the, the subtitle of the picture. And the object of all of this is to get people to read this, you know, the, the other bits and bobs here, or even to click a button here, or even to scroll down. And then the object of all the paragraphs down here is to read the next paragraph, the next paragraph, and all you're trying to do is make it so the whole object of the page is to get people to scroll, 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 scroll. Um, that is what you need to do with the page. Um, and side tangent here we have the results for fast pages shocking um, and let's see what happened with Kartra Kartra was just dreadful so that's enough of bashing other people's websites <laughs> sorry about that um, in fact the reason I use GT metrics is because it's like someone that you can never please so we're in the process we are um, so, for example, if I just oh, if I put my own one of my own websites in here, I'm not going to fare too well. So, my web dev has a whole bunch of projects, but the next project is that we're at, so. What happened is that all Word WordPress is not created equally. You can have a WordPress website with different themes, and yeah, all themes are different. So, what it turns out is that with our previous web developer. He built all of our web infrastructure, every page, every freaking website in our ecosystem through a, a theme called Divi. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like that. Now it looks good, it's easy, it's got an easy page builder, etc. But in terms of speed, it's slow. So what, we've, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna migrate all of our WordPress sites to a different um, theme. I think it's Elementor or something like that, which will be faster, so yeah. This is going to come back with a shit report, B and a C. So yeah, better than ClickFunnels and all the others, but it's still not up for my liking. But at least it's helpful because it tells me tells us what we can improve on. So leverage browser caching, whatever the hell that means. Um, <laughs> so 
Yeah, and we can improve optimization on the images, yada yada yada. But it's still better than nothing. Um, better than you know these pages. So let's get back to where we are. Okay, Elementor. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's not Elementor. It's something else. So as I said, that I realised it wasn't. We we're looking at that. Um, but anyway, yeah. Moving on, thank you page, opt-in page, lead magnet, yeah. Then, once you got all the things in place, then you create a Facebook page. Because a lot of people do that first. They'll do that first, and then when they go to build the Facebook page, Facebook will ask all sorts of things. What's your phone number? What's your URL? What would you do? What, and if you haven't done that, this is why you, we've done this all in order. Then open up a Facebook business account. You can't do that without a page, so yeah, it's all in order. Then create an advert for your, and then drive traffic to that opt-in page, whatever page you've just rustled up. Remember, you're still pre-poc. Um, now analyze your stats. Um, obviously, you're, all you're gonna do is you're just going to you know drive traffic down to a page and see what happens. You know, whatever it is, whether you're opting in to something else, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah. Can someone remind me of many chats, please? I'm just gonna type it in here. Many chat, remind me for later if I forget, because um, that's is really helpful. Um, yeah. So then you're analysing, you know, the the traffic, like everything we covered yesterday, and then, as I said, if you got some leads and then you know the conversion rate, etc., um, then you've potentially got a business. Woohoo! So we exited, so my fairy pen pal, we exited post-poc after the Christmas campaign and we got our first 40 fairies. Um, so yeah, then once you're post-poc and your first campaign worked, you're like, boom, now we're post-poc. Now we need to get a business bank account. Oh yeah, up until this point, all you're doing is you're connecting your, your, your uh, PayPal, your Stripe to your personal bank account, okay? You're not even in a limited company yet. You don't want to be. You need to delay that shit. Um, so, yeah. So this is just going to your personal bank account. So then, when you have a proper business, then open up a Tide account or a Starling account. Try and move away from the the, the, the incumbents. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Tide or Starlings very quick. You now need bookkeeping and accounting software. So 17 hats will help, but eventually you'll need zero and receipt bank. Jesus, I'm coming up with all, I'm finding more spell check errors here. What is going on in my team? Uh, well, it's my fault. So, yeah, receipt bank. Um, so what happens is if you have like an invoice or a receipt when you're out and about, etc. What happens, you, all you do is you get your mobile phone, you take a picture of your of this, this receipt via the app, and that app well, it's got algorithms in it, and it will know, you know, what's the VAT, what is it, where, where you bought it from. If it's McDonald's, it'll put it down as food, or you know, whatever, and that will go straight to your accounting software. And I recommend zero. So, again, I've got no links. I don't earn any affiliate deals from them. So, and it'll do automatic bank recon reconciliation. So, yeah, it'll make your accounting a lot cheaper. So that's that. Yeah. So once you're post poc. Okay, so once you've proven a business that actually works, this is when you start doing all the dicking about, doing all the legal beagle stuff. Except this is what most people do from day one. And then they end up with a business that doesn't work and all of a sudden they've got a limited company for something that doesn't make any sales and oh shit, I wish I didn't do this. Then you gotta wind down the company, blah, blah, blah. So then create a limited company, hold out for this as long as possible, okay? Um, go to companywizard.co.uk. Again, I've got no links here. In fact, I'm just going to say I have no affiliate links with anyone. There we go. Um, and yeah, it'll, it'll take 25 quid and five minutes to set up a limited company. Uh, most people default to uh, £100 of share value um, with basically 100 shares at £1 a share. Don't do that because later down the line that's going to bite you in the ass if you manage to grow the business. So what I highly recommend is get 10,000 ordinary shares at a penny each. That will give you way more flexibility for borrowing money, giving equity out, all sorts of stuff later down the line. Um, repeat your successful online marketing campaign. So just like we were doing with Fairy, so um, our March campaign was when we did this, so that we're ticking that. Um, and then, yeah, rinse and repeat. So we're going to keep on doing this. 
explore other marketing avenues. Yeah, so here's the thing. With this bit, once you have something that is working like a treat on Facebook and you know all of your conversion rates, etc., all of a sudden you now know that you have a funnel that freaking works. There's no subjective there's no subjectiveness here. You're like, shit, I've done this funnel two or three times now, it works. And Facebook is the easiest and quickest way to basically stress test a funnel. So then, once you know your funnel works, then you can go and try and drive some Google traffic to it, or YouTube, or Insta, or TikTok, or whatever it may be. Remember, um, or LinkedIn. Just always go to the places where your demographic hangs out. So with you know a lot, of my, like I've got a corporate management training company, and we teach MBAs and all sorts of ILM accreditations, etc. There's zero point in us advertising on TikTok. So just be relevant. Don't just get sucked into the next you know, shiny object. Um, what else is there? Get a flip chart, draw out the perfect client journey. Yep, mentioned that earlier. Analyze the stats you have from the original launch ad and blah, 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 and can you tweak things? Yep, that's good. Once you've optimized the ad campaign, scale it, yeah. Hell, get a loan, get a biz business bounce back loan, pump it all into your funnel that works. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's ironic, like people, like I'm a trader, but, and you know, in a good year of manual trading, I'll make 10, 30, 10 to thirty percent, etc. But with, with the Facebook funnel or any funnel, you can make like a hundred percent ROI, like in months. So literally, a lot of my money I actually recycle back into marketing and recycle that back in and recycle that. That's how you know that that's how you grow a business. You're just constantly recycling the marketing campaign. And also, this is a bit of a side side step here. Um, there's a thing about um, your velocity. Of ad spend this is crucial so if someone says oh yeah I've got a million pound ad budget here or ad spend per year a lot of people like everyone will go geez um, they think you've got a million quid in cash just sat in a bank and you're just putting it into advertising that's not true because if you let's say have a, a, an ad spend velocity of three months okay so what this means is that you you start an advert here okay and then three months later you get so let's say you put you spent 100 quid here and three months later through sales you you get all of that 100 quid back so what you then do is if you then spend that 100 quid again another three months etc so what this means is if you have, say, a three-month lag with your marketing campaign, you can then recycle that same £100 four times. So even though you've got 100 quid in actual cash, if you're consistently recycling this every three months, um, every year your actual ad spend will be 400 quid. So if you had, let's say, a three-month lag, like some of mine, my average um, ad spend velocity is four. Um, so if I wanted, yeah, a million pound a year ad spend, well, all I need to do is really just chuck in 250 grand, wait three months, and then, yeah. So really, I can have a million pound ad spend with only 250K, um, yeah. Or if you can have something which has like a one month lag, you can recycle it 12 times then all of a sudden you need way less. So hopefully that makes sense. That's something which I never see anyone talking about, but it's it's like fundamental for, for marketing. Absolute fundamental. Um, yeah, now's a good time to hire a part-time bookkeeper, not an accountant. Yeah, here's the thing, don't get an accountant, get a bookkeeper. Um, that's a whole nother topic. Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, attend, yeah, then go try and raise money. So. Once you've got it, pump it all into marketing, continue to build your team, make it autonomous as possible using Zapier and all that sort of stuff. Don't forget you then need an accountant a few months before, yeah. Um, congrats, yeah. So that's, obviously I've breezed through this. Um, you need to do things in that order. Um, I had actually a, a message from someone the other day saying, hey, I'm, just, I'm about to set up a new business and I'm just, here's my new LTD. I was like, oh no, you've just scuppered 18 months of like free time there, so. Yeah. Right, ManyChat, before I forget. ManyChat is awesome. Um, and the reason being is that, let's zoom out here. Let's get some fresh 
space. Um, typically, when I send an email out, <coughs> or anyone to send an email out, you'll probably get something like a 20% open, um, open rate. And if you have a link in there that you want someone to click, you'll probably get anywhere between 1 to 10% click rate or CTR click through rate. And it's pretty shit. Um, and, that, and also your deliverability rate may even be, you know, anything from 50 to 80%. Like, so email is not that good because things go to junk boxes, blah, blah, blah. However, ManyChat is really cool because it's a Facebook messaging bot. Whoopsie. Um, and, ba and you can create a workflow of messages um, and I'll just show you one. Oh, they've just changed the outlook. Um, oh dear. Um, here's an old one. This, this is actually, the, this flow, this didn't actually work. This is a bad funnel, but I, I'll just show you what it does. Basically, you can you know send a Facebook message put a, a time delay in or a condition, you know, have they clicked the link if they haven't, okay, do something else, blah, blah, blah. So you can be, have dynamic messaging, so you're not just constantly um, spamming people. So you only send messages when, you know, they want a message, etc. But even though this was a, a poor performing campaign, look at this. So 100% deliverability, so everyone obviously reads a Facebook message pretty much. Um, everyone opened it and had a high click-through rate. 67% that's not bad next video everyone gets it obviously the click-through rate obviously this depends what you're trying to get them to click but um, yeah it's just really good um, I would definitely check out many chat I'm not gonna spend much time doing it today um, what is this one so yeah um, there's all sorts of things that you can do in many chat so definitely check it out right time for questions um, I'm aware it's an hour and a half Let's start from the up and go down. Uh, click funnel support is appalling. Yep. Can't <laughs> um, <clears throat> group. Yeah. All of these are shit. Kajabi shit. They're all shit. Just use them for inspiration and get a proper WordPress website. Um, you can optimize. Yep. Yeah. Never procrastinated in my life. <laughs> um, very good for mobile speed tests. Google is brutal on you. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you're just gonna have to get a developer that will just speed it up. Google Page Insights and um, G2 Metrics, just yeah, get them to download those reports and then edit. Um, uh, love many chat. Any questions? What's your opinion on Cedars and Crowdcube? I mm, don't do it. Um, there's a lot of mistrust with things like that these days because a lot of these businesses just take the money and then go bust. It's, it's happened massively. Um, so. Yeah, I, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't put your own business on there. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it's just free. It's marketing at the end of the day. If you if you do well, um, but I with with crowdfunding websites like Crowdcube, etc. Um, you have to game them, and the way you game them is by well, they they have an algorithm. So, for example, if you're trying to raise I don't know, let's say a hundred grand, um, what they all do is the businesses that are highlighted on their website like you know here are the top picks today or whatever they're the ones that ha that do well so what you basically need to do is that I, every site will be different but it'll be something like if you can rally if you can get 30% of your required funding in the first five days um, they're gonna put you on the, on the home page and you'll then have like a a higher like the odd or the probability of getting fully funded goes up massively and so what you would do is if you are going to go on Cedars and Crowdcube before you actually launch on there I would actually get some investors some private investors friends and family etc and say hey um, here's this cool business would you like an ex you know percentage of it blah 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 if they go yes don't take the money there and then just go actually can we do it via Cedars and so the day you launch what you then do is you tell everyone and go hey it's open now you can invest and then all of a sudden you can get that invest your your pre cooked investors to you know get you past that 30% funded bit because then the website will be like oh this this business is doing well um, Adam please get an affiliate for WAP setup we have it I just don't pr promote it um, everyone I showed them blown away I'm so sorry ah oh, thanks mate 
thank you um yeah we will um i'll we'll have to promote it more um and then the reason being that i haven't promoted it is that i haven't actually nailed the funnel so the wap doesn't actually have a good funnel yet and so it's pointless well mind it's not pointless because you could do it better but anyway um is there a way you can extract yourself from rt it's a problem i find myself yes you can um and expert businesses you're not going to like it um the, the, the way that I would extract myself from, let's say, RT is I would, you would need, you'd need like a team, like a, like an A team, like, I don't know, get three to five other traders who are shit hot, who would then take on, like from, if I was going to do it, who would then take on all of the things that I do. So they'll make trade updates, they'll do, you know, they'd help Sherpa, um, all the, the students, etc. And then maybe pay a big name trader to uh, big dog um, to you know provide a video a month etc so you know but that's the only way I could basically eject myself self out and then I'll just you know be a shareholder um, and you would have to do the same you'd have to find a team of people that can you know create rapport with your students etc um, Sam, get a bookkeeper, not an accountant. Okay, I will go into this a little bit. Right. Um, oh, how can I say this without pissing off every accountant in this? <laughs> or watch this. Um, the what you will find with if if you just go and get an accountant, okay, is that? Um, no, no. Let's let's reset. 90 to 95 percent of the stuff that you actually need in your business from an accounting point of view is data entry slash bookkeeping well it's just the same thing pretty much bookkeeping right so that's literally call it, yeah let's call it 90 percent of the business of your required accounting type stuff is bookkeeping if you just get an accountant, they will do the bookkeeping for you, but the hourly rate will be a lot higher um, per hour. Okay, and also, like I, I've had, I think seven or eight accountants over the last ten years, and I'm constantly pulling my hair out. So, for example, you may have, you may find someone who's an amazing accountant, right? You make friends with them, you know, they're really good, and you you buy into their company for them, etc. But what happens is that your this this person will not be your, will be your accountant but then they'll pass you on to like tour through their minions or well not minions their, their, their team and then all of a sudden you now have four points of contact you've got your your accountant friend and you've got these people that are managing doing the bookkeeping and, and stuff in your account and you're gonna get emails from freaking everyone um, so that gets a bit of a clusterfuck so what you then yeah so what and, yeah and also you'll then probably Weekly, way, what's going on there? Weekly data requests, data requests. So obviously the, the accountant will be managing lots of different businesses, okay? So they will be managing, you know, 50 to 200 different uh, uh, accounts, right? They will not, they'll, they'll know nothing about your business. Like, yeah, you'll, you'll explain it in your initial con consultation meeting, but they won't remember it. They may take notes, but they, they don't know your business. They don't and may not even care about your business. And what will happen is that every week or every two weeks, you'll get an email from them or their team going, hey, um, we've can you please have a look at this spreadsheet? There's like 5,000 million different things that we're not sure what they are. Like, you know, what are these in your bank statements, you know? And then you waste an hour or more going through every line item going, oh, this is a sale, this is an expense, blah, blah, blah. Like, for example, I used, and I'll, I will say the name, I spent £12,000 over a six-month period with the biggest, one of the biggest uh, accounting firms in Norwich called Larkin Gowan. I had about five points of contact. And after six months, right, like at the time, we had a like one of the sales, like the bread and butter sales, it was like a, a £2,000 product, okay? And then... Like I got an email from the accountant going, so we've got a bunch of these two thousand pound sales. What are they? And I was like, Are you effing shitting me? Like that's my whole business. <laughs> yeah. So 
I'm going off on one now, but it's uh, I, honestly, I will be setting up my own accounting firm when I get some spare time because I, I reckon I could clean up. I really could. I could because the whole accounting industry needs cleaning up in terms of process and how to deal with clients and and also a metrics dashboard like the your accountant will not know what your leading indicators are every so you, you have you have lagging and leading indicators so looking at your revenue last month is a lagging indicator because what it's showing you is right last month they did this this much in sales this much and out like it tells you nothing really or it tells you a little bit it's, it's, it doesn't protect you though what you need are leading indicators so for example if you're doing uh, 200 phone calls if you if you do 200 phone calls a, a, a month that equals the sales that you need to grow okay well <clears throat> if all of a sudden one week you do two phone calls that's a leading indicator because you know shit okay um, if I maintain this cadence I'm only going to be, be doing you know 10 or 50 phone calls this month which means I'm going to have a massive gap in revenue in the next month or two so that will be an, a really shit exp explanation of a leading indicator so yeah you <clears throat> so what you need is a good dashboard uh, of indicators that are relevant to your business um, and so this is why you need a bookkeeper in-house or at or someone that was spending at a minimum of 20 hours a week doing your stuff that has full access to your zero your receipt bank etc so this bookkeeper knows every every single thing of your business this bookkeeper should know more about your accounts than you do and so what happens is you can then pay a good bookkeeper or they're a good you know their hourly rate will be anywhere between 10 to 25 quid an hour long story short it'll be cheaper than an accountant They'll be better because they're they're entrenched they're they're like in your business, um, so yeah. What you have is a bookkeeper, and you then have a separate accountant. Okay, so your bookkeeper will basically be your financial controller that'll know everything, and if your accountant ever does have any queries, it'll go straight to your bookkeeper. The bookkeeper will answer it. It'll save you time, um, and then what you'll then do is you'll get your bookkeeper to to run the pay, the payroll, to do the VAT do freaking everything and what I would do is treat every quarter as a year so like what you need to do is get every quarter completely spick back uh, tip top um, and you know treat it like it's a year end so it's in a nice little folder or online folder boom and it's airtight so that way you know that there's no, nothing wrong with it fully accounted blah 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 and then at the end of the year your bookkeeper basically sends everything to your accountant and go right this is the year this is the profit this is the profit we made this is everything we did blah, blah blah you don't get your accountant to tell you what you did this is this is crucial um, the yeah and then all the accountant will be doing so here's so this is sorry if I'm pissing off accountants here you only need an accountant to file your year end that is all your accountant is going to be doing do not under any circumstances ask your accountant for strategic tax positioning advice or strategy because nine out of ten accountants that I've found over the last god uh, over the last ten years they are not that good at strict, um, financial engineering and they will not know the best tax things or uh, tax positioning for you so what you need is a full-time or in-house you know someone a bookkeeper that's fully in your business and knows everything that does does everything every year the bookkeeper will then send everything to your accountant and you tell the accountant this is what happened audit obviously double check it you know audit it blah 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 they then file the year end and then every 18 months every or 18 to 24 months you pay the most amount of money you can find on the best shit hot tax specialist within your sector okay and they will be something like 500 pounds per hour and they all their I mean that is their whole job their whole job is to work about help a business become the most tax efficient as possible without doing tax evasion avoidance is good evasion is illegal um, and so yeah all I, all I do every year or two is I will find someone and sit down with them I'll pay them you know it averages around you know a thousand to two thousand pounds per meeting and I will pick the shit out of their brains for two to three hours 
Um, and that will give me enough guidance for the next two years. That is what you do. That is my little rant on accounting. I will one day clean up this business <laughs> because they're all shit, um, all of them. Um, so, uh, when I say they're all shit, they're all shit from a business owner's perspective, if that makes sense, okay? Like, for example, you would have thought, like, I am really bad at understanding tax type stuff, right? So, you would have thought, and by the way, every business owner is, every business owner doesn't know much about, you know, the, the legal requirements of their business or when they need to do stuff. So, not once have I gone to a new accountant and they've literally mapped out in baby English of what I need to do when I would need to do it. So one of the, if I had an accounting firm, the, the first freaking meeting after they are now a, you know, a, a client is, you know, get a PDF or, you know, it's just something go, right, your year end or your beginning of the year is, I don't know, 1st of October, whatever. So your year end is 30th of September. Um, we need to file that, um, you know, these points here that's when we need to file it um, this is when you need to pay it this is when we, we need to file your year-end etc this is when you need to pay your year-end uh, January over here by January this is when you need to put in your self-assessment stuff blah 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 so literally just map out with obviously different colors everything that I need to do and then literally put every single thing in your Google Calendar and with reminders etc and then, I mean, there's so many things you can do to make the client experience better. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I will chill out. Reasons for getting bookkeep. Yep, yeah, sorry, that was a long question. Same as Amazon. Yeah, yeah, you can game Amazon as well, Adam. Uh, if you need equipment for your business, computers, what's better to do, buy or lease? Oh, I cannot give you a straight answer to that, mate. I can, I can give equally good answers for leasing and buying. Um. <clears throat> yeah. I here's a top tip: don't buy desktop computers. So we had a business that we had to get everyone um, working at home from COVID due to COVID, etc. And the majority we had desktops, and we're like, Jesus, oh my lord! So from now, and then we had to quickly go out and lease a whole bunch of laptops. So from now on, I will never buy a desktop computer for a business for for an office. I'll get everyone a good laptop, a good fast laptop. Um, whether you buy or lease them, it's your call. What I personally do, like the computer I'm in, I the I bought this computer, the one that I'm using, this this desktop power thingy, um, well over five years ago. It was probably five years ago. I can't remember. And when I got it, I spent big money on this. I say big money. It wasn't. I, I spent like two and a half grand on this business, on this whatever. So. It was a 16 gig RAM, so back then that was a lot of RAM. It was an i7, that was, you know, 4 gigahertz. Back then when I got this, this was a good computer. So this was, what, five, six years old. And still, and I've got a good, gra I've got a graphics, G a GTX 1080 Ti or something like that. So it's good. Um, that's a recent update. And it's lasted me. And I've had this computer for years. So in terms of a yearly or monthly spend of this computer, it's good. However, <laughs> Um, I've gone a bit over the top. I've just spent four and a half grand on a new computer, um, and I I've never built one before. So I'm actually trying to build it. I've got it's this beast. You probably can't see it because of the background, but it's like this absolute monster. No, you can't see it because I've got a silly background. But um, I've no idea. But yeah, I've got 128 gig of RAM in it <laughs> and uh, yeah all sorts so that computer will last me like at least five years easy so for me I personally like to buy and then yeah um, have to sign off thank you cheers Janie shit house book yep irrelevant as fuck I'm gonna ask why do you think what do you think of the Cybertruck I like it yeah game changer um, yeah any questions before we round off because this is supposed to be an hour seminar of zoomy thing and it's been one hour 45 has it helped um i've got it literally gone off on one but yeah we have covered a lot by the way we have covered a lot just look at this in the last two days for those who've been here we've let we've gone through a lot of stuff um <clears throat> So yeah, 
I really, really do hope it helps. And yeah, um, please go and launch your businesses, do well. Um, and yeah, help others get in business as well. And yeah, do the WAP, do the WAP, doesn't hurt. Um, do, your, do your future self a favor. Cheerio everyone, bye bye.